welcome to the Purple Sewing Cloud um, YouTube channel. My name is Samantha and um, today we're going to be sewing a scalloped hem. This is my current project. Um, this is the Nina Lee Bakerloo blouse. This goes up to a UK size 28. Um, we, I've already started this as you can see. I've sewn um, the collar. This pattern comes with a straight collar that has a frill on it, but I've hacked it and changed it to a scallop. After I'd sewn the collar, I realised I wanted to sew a scallop across the hem as well. I've had loads of people messaging me on Instagram and asking me to do a tutorial for this, so here I am. Okay, I'm just going to be doing the hem today, showing you how to do that. I am going to do a separate video to do a scallop um, collar because it is a slightly different design pro um, process. Okay, let's get to work on scalloping the hem. Okay, the first step in this process is creating a facing for your hem. Um, make it the same length as your hem and then I'm doing mine two and a half inches wide. Depending on the size of your scallops is depending how big you're going to want the facing to be. If it's larger, you're going to want, if you want larger scallops, you're going to want a, a wider um, facing for that. Um, okay, once you've got that all cut out, you're going to want to sew it into one large loop, so sew both ends together. And then I have interfaced this. I am using a lightweight woven interfacing. I just prefer this type to the paper kind. I find you get a nicer finish once it's all pressed and once and after it's been washed a couple of times. Um, you want to keep your mermaids looking as best you can. So I do recommend a lightweight woven interfacing rather than the paper kind. Okay. Once you've got all that interfaced and sewn together, pop it to one side. Okay, so the next step of the process is creating a template for your scallops. Um, the first step of that is measuring the length of your hem. My hem is 100 inches and um, you want your template to be um, one eighth of that. So divide 100 inches by 12 by 8, sorry, and you get 12.5 inches. So this is 12.5 inches across. And that's the same depth as my hem as well, and that's 12, um, 2.5 inches. First thing we're going to do is just mark out a small border here and this is going to give us a little bit of space on the fabric when we're sewing the scallops. I'm going to do a quarter of an inch. Like so. And then the next step of the process is drawing in our scallops. Find something round that's a good size for your scallops. I'm using a roll of washi tape. You can use anything, um, a spool of thread is a great round shape, but just make it the size that you want your scallops to be. Okay, then we're gonna draw our scallops onto the template. You want your scallops to um, finish and end at either end of the template. It's just gonna make drawing them onto the facing much easier. Whilst you're drawing these on as well, you're going to want them to start and finish your scallops in kind of the same place. So around here, I want all my scallops to be around there. If you want, you can draw a line across. I'm just going to do that by eye. You see how they're all crossing over at the same point. Just continue that you get to the end and try and make sure the scallop at this end also finishes whole like this one. If you want you can just draw this one in like so just so you've got that there. Okay once your scallops are all drawn on like I've done here you see how they match at each end and um, I did have to have a little bit of playing around to get that here but it doesn't matter if it looks a bit scruffy at this point. Next step is cutting them all out so we're just going to cut 
around the scallops along these lines here and discard this bit and keep this top bit. That's all my scallops cut out. The next thing we want to do is get these scallops drawn onto our facing. Just pop your scallops onto your facing, lining it up with the top edge. I'm using a Pilot Frixon Ball Marker. These are really great um, for using whilst you're sewing, but be warned, um, these pens can stain fabric. Um, they, when you mark this on, if you go over it with heat, they disappear. But I have heard reports of the, these reappearing and also on some fabrics not disappearing. So before you use these on fabric, do do a test. This, using these pens for this process though is really great because this is, what we're doing is marking on our stitch line um, on the inside of the fabric. So even if it doesn't disappear or it reappears in the cold, you're not going to see that because it's going to be um, on the inside of the fabric of, and of the hem. Okie doke. So as I said, just line that up like so and we're just going to draw around the scallops. It is quite a time consuming process sewing scallops, I'm not going to lie. I'm also going to just put a little mark on this side of the scallop just so I can match up where I want the scallops to be with the template. So just draw around them, take your time, making it as neat as possible, making sure you mark those little bits in as well. Make sure it's quite a, a good line as well. My, I have vision problems so um, I, I want it to be quite visible when I'm sewing, I'm not, so I'm not straining my eyes. And then again, we're just going to mark on that scallop just there where we want on that on the piece of paper just to line it up with these other scallop points and um, just for when we're putting on the putting on the next bit of template. Okay? So once you've got your first a line of scallops marked on. Next step, I'm just going to move this along and do the next ones. L line that up with the top of the fabric and just line that up there as well, just where you want those scallops to be. And we're going to draw all those on all the way around the hem. As I've said, this is a hundred inches of hem. So I'm going to grab a cup of tea and a biscuit, draw all these on, and I'll come back to you once it's all done. And what I'm doing now is just pinning it on to the hem of the skirt with right sides together and the scallops pointing down. Um, what I'm going to do is pin all this on and then I'm gonna take it onto my machine, my machine, and baste a, a, row, a row of stitches just along through the middle of the facing. Um, and that's just gonna mean I'm not fighting the pins when I'm sewing on the scallops, right? So I'm gonna finish pinning this, and then we'll take it to the machine. Okay, so as you can see, that's all basted on there with a nice big stitch that'll be easy to remove. Um, my machine is the B4, the Benina B480. I'm part of the Benina blogging team, so this machine was provided by them as part of that. Um, on my um, machine, it has a nine millimeter um, feed here. <laughs> Normal machines are about 5.5, um, so I'm using the straight stitch plate just because so my hole is smaller here and I'm also using the Benina foot which is the 34C. Um, what The reason I like this foot is it's clear. I have some disabilities um, as you might know so my vision isn't great and this just means I can see exactly where my needle's going and I can line up that little red line on my foot with that pink stitch line. 
um, for my scallops and it make, just means it's super accurate. So let's pop that in. Um, also, stitch length. And that's the secret to getting these scallops really neat. Reduce your stitch length down. Um, I've got mine set on 1.4 and that's just gonna mean they are super tiny and super accurate as I am sewing. So let's get this started. I'm lining my needle up with one of the points. I'm gonna start stitching. We're gonna take it super super slow the slower you go the neater they will be it is gonna take you a long time though pop your laptop behind your sewing machine pop on your favorite tv show and just relax and get into that zen stitching mode um so there we go there we're in i'm trying to move my hand so you can see this and we're just following that scallop all the way around gently maneuvering the fabric on this machine as well i have i am using the freehand system which is a knee lift and it means i can move that foot up and down so as i'm maneuvering the scallops around um i've got lots of movement there just take your time as i said you want to be super accurate with them scallops getting them all stitched in if you don't have a knee lift, just use your presser foot lever at the back. Um, I do find a knee lift is much easier for me because of my disabilities. I find my, I don't I do have some difficulties with my hands, um, and I do find the presser foot lever on most machines really difficult to operate. Um, I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> So there you, we go and then when we get to that edge of the scallop we're just going to leave that needle in the down position, switch it round like so and start again. Um, I'm going to end this now, finish sewing all these scallops and then I'll come back to you soon. Okay, so as you can see, I've sewn some of my scallops. I haven't actually sewn all the way round. I've just done a small section here so I can show you how we trim them and turn them out. Um, it's just uh, otherwise I'll lose the light by the time I've sewn all the scallops in and I actually need a nap. Um, so I've just removed my basting stitches as well along between where I've sewn my scallops um, and let, I'm just going to show you how you trim them. So first thing, tinking shears. These are you're going to be your best friend for trimming the scallops. So just go in and don't be careful not to cut the stitching line, but just cut as close to that as you can. Don't worry too much about going into the right into the actual v part of the scallop we'll do that we'll go in with some other shears to with this, some snips to get that little bit so we're just going to go around the the outside of the scallops again also if you notice i have positioned the side seam so that it goes in this round this is my side seam here and that's this the joining of the facing i have positioned this so that it's in the middle of the scallop that's the best place to have it if you've got it near the v it just makes that little v bit really um extra bulky and you want to try and remove as much bulk as you can right let's just finish trimming this bit of scallop what i'm gonna do is go right in to that V as close as you dare but without breaking the stitching and then do it on the other side as well like so with your snips like so and you see how close we've got that into the stitching how like so you want that nice oh you want that nice and close to the stitching that's going to give you the best shape with your scallop the better the scallops are trimmed the better they will be after you turn them out 
it's going to take you some time to trim them all but take your time um, be as accurate as you can and be careful not to hit that stitching line the great thing about using pinking shears is it's giving you those notches as well around there if there are any little bits that are a little bit far out you can just go in like so and just trim a little slit in there but be careful again not to hit your stitching line now we're going to turn them out so just pop them out like so the next stage of this just pop that thread out um, we want to pull these all out so what we're going to do is take a a point turner and just pop it into our scallop and just push gently around the edge of your scallop to make it nice and round you see that how that is now the difference between that one and that one and again do it on the other t the other ones you've done and it just pulls out all of that fabric that's stuck in before you press it okay so we've got three done there I actually might I'm gonna give these three a press so you can see the difference a good press will do as well be careful when you're pressing don't stick your fingers in the scallops to press them or anything like that be careful with your fingers don't burn them <laughs> they're very valuable right what give me one moment and I'll go and press them okay so that's those three scallops all pressed in and you can see how smooth those rounds are um, and this one as well has that seam through the middle of it and it's really kept that lovely round shape um, I am super happy with them what I'm gonna do is take this away and finish sewing all of those scallops into the hem um, and then finish this so there's two options so once your scallops are all sewn in, clipped and turned and pressed, um, there's two options. What I'll be doing is turning this under and then stitching it to this, to the skirt. Or you could just overlock it and stitch it as well. Um, it's up to yourself. Um, you could use a normal straight stitch or a blind hem stitch. And I will post some pictures on Instagram to show you. Um, I think this is such a beautiful finishing technique. It is super lengthy though. It will. It is something you need to take your time with. Um, but there's no rush. If you're sewing these scallops and they take you hours and hours, nobody's going to judge you for that. Take as much time as you want to sew them. Um, make them look as pretty as you can. Nobody's going to judge you for how long it takes. Um, it takes me days to sew up projects because I like to rest in between and I'm, um, and I'm quite a procrastinator as well. I like to pick up my phone and have a little play um, whilst I'm sewing and I get distracted easily. So yeah, um, but as I said, it's a lovely finishing technique and I also think this technique would be perfect for other sewing projects like um, around hem, around sleeve cuffs or around um, maybe a table mat or a lampshade or something. I think it's a super lovely finish. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments if you'll be using this scallop. Um, like and subscribe and I will speak to you soon.